Brethren, we are about to install the officers elect of the Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons of the State of Michigan. Right Worshipful Grand Secretary, you will read the names of the officers elect and the officers so named will step forward to the altar and take position in order of rank. The most worshipful Grand Master nearest the south. Grand Stewards, Omar H. Flores, Jonathan J. Worthy, Larry M. Galloway, Grand Organist, Gerald E. Millar, Worshipful Grand Tyler, Gerald G. Blomquist, Worshipful Grand Marshal, Craig H. Mason. Worshipful Junior Grand Deacon, Robert E. Cooper. Worshipful Senior Grand Deacon, Mark A. Manning. Right Worshipful Grand Chaplain, George P. Thompson. Right Worshipful Grand Lecturer, Thomas Brown. Right Worshipful Grand Secretary, Robert P. Conley, Fast Grand Master. Right Worshipful Grand Treasurer, Michael J. Jungle, Fast Grand Master. Right Worshipful Junior Grand Warden, David M. Hill. Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden, Joshua M. Woodwick. Right Worshipful Deputy Grand Master, William R. Finkel. Most Worshipful Grand Master, Richard E. Wisely. Brethren of the Grand Lodge, you here behold these brothers, each of whom having been duly chosen, now declares himself ready for installation. If you know of a valid reason why any one of them should not be installed, state your objection now, or else forever after hold your peace. There being no objections, I shall now proceed with the installation. Brethren, the first lesson that we are taught in Masonry is that no man should ever enter upon any great and important undertaking without first invoking the blessing of deity. Let us, therefore, before proceeding with this important ceremony, invoke the blessing of the Supreme Architect of the Universe. Please rise. Right Worshipful Grand Chaplain, invoke the blessing of deity. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Supreme Architect of the Universe, we come to this installation ceremony with appreciation. Appreciation for those who have led this Grand Lodge in the past, for their dedication and service, for their enriching contributions to this great fraternity. We thank you for those who now assume the responsibility of leadership in our Grand Lodge. We are thankful for their enthusiasm, their plans, and their hopes as well as their commitment to the principles of Freemasonry. We have come a long way since the beginning of Masonry in Michigan, but we find ourselves at a critical point in the life of the craft. The past has set the stage for the future, and we look forward full of hope, ideals, and plans to make 
masonry even greater. We expect to challenge one another in the spirit of brotherly love so that our efforts will be for the common good and benefit of us all. We recognize our responsibilities, so give us the faith, the energy, and the know-how to fulfill them. The past is no more. Tomorrow will never come. Today is all we have, so help us to use it wisely. Your purpose can be seen in the work of masonry, its philanthropic passion, its fraternal expression, and its dependency upon your strength and wisdom. Please bless this great fraternity and all who serve it. In your name we pray. Amen. Most Worshipful Brother Grand Marshal, you will present the Most Worshipful Grand Master elect for installation. Most Worshipful Sir, I present to you my worthy brother, Richard D. Wisely. Most Worshipful Grand Master Elect for installation. Brother Richard, you are about to be installed as only the 170th man over the last 189 years out of a membership during that same period that reached into the millions. To hold the office of Most Worshipful Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons of the State of Michigan. It is, my brother, a great honor to be able to serve this Grand Lodge as its Grand Master. It is also a great responsibility. You are the leader of our fraternity. Whether we progress or decline, whether we work together in peace and harmony, or suffer from confusion and discord, will in large measure depend upon you. You set the direction. You set the tone. I encourage you to always remember the cardinal virtues of our order, temperance, fortitude, prudence, and justice and to always live by our tenets of brotherly love, relief, and truth. In addition to the fraternal side of your office, you will always have great responsibilities for the business side of the fraternity. The Grand Lodge of, Mich of Michigan and its subsidiary corporations make up a $150 million organization, and the Grand Master serves as its chairman of the board. As such, your fiduciary responsibility to this Grand Lodge cannot be overstated. My brother, when you were installed as Worshipful Master of your lodge, you promised to uphold the ancient charges, regulations, and landmarks of this Grand Lodge, and took upon yourself an obligation. Do you once again consent to those charges, regulations, and landmarks, and do you can reconfirm that obligation? I do. Then you will advance to the altar and kneel on both knees. Say I. State your name in full and repeat after me. I, Richard David Wisely. In the presence of Almighty God. In the presence of Almighty God. And these witnesses. And these witnesses. I hereby, I hereby promise. I hereby promise. That I will accept the office. That I will accept the office. Of the most worshipful Grand Master. Of the most worshipful Grand Master. Of free and accepted Masons. Of free and accepted Masons. Of the state of Michigan. Of the state of Michigan. And to the duties of that high office. And to the duties of that high office. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. <coughs> zealously. Zealously. And impartially administer. And impartially administer. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. For the ensuing 12 months. For the ensuing 12 months. And until a successor. And until a successor. Shall have been duly elected. Shall have been duly elected. And installed in my stead. And installed in my stead. I further promise. I further promise that I will support and uphold. That I will support and uphold the constitutions. The constitutions. Laws. Laws. Edicts. Edicts. Rituals and ceremonies. Rituals and ceremonies of this grand lodge. Of this grand lodge. <clears throat> and that I will in all things. And that I will in all things. Constitutions. 
Perform the duties of the leader of the craft. Of the leader of the craft. And as most worshipful grandmaster. And as most worshipful grandmaster. Of this grand jurisdiction. Of this grand jurisdiction. So help me God. So help me God. Keep me steadfast. And keep me steadfast. This my solemn obligation. And this my solemn obligation. So help Amen. me God. Yeah. Most worshipful sir, you will now arise and be invested with the jewel of your office. As the collar and jewel come to rest on your honored shoulders, may the wisdom of Solomon pour through your veins and aid you in your quest for truth and justice. Most worshipful Grand Master, by your memorial usage and the irrevocable landmarks of Masonry, you, are in, you have been invested with, as a Grand Master of Masons in Michigan with powers and prerogatives which are well nigh absolute. The interests of the craft, for good or for bad, are placed in your hands. I would be off, but offer these words of admonition. The very, very consciousness of the possession of great power will ever make a generous mind cautious and gentle in its exercise. To rule has been the lot of many. To rule well has been the, but the fortune of few. The office of Grand Master is one of great antiquity and respect, and is one of the highest dignities to which we may aspire. You should never forget that although you now hold the office of Grand Master, you are first and foremost a Master Mason, and I solemnly enjoin you ever to walk and act as such. Brother Worshipful Grand Marshal, you will escort the Most Worshipful Grand Master to the East. Most worshipful Grand Master, behold your brethren. Brethren, behold your most worshipful Grand Master. Will all the Grand Lodge officers, BGPs, please rise. Okay. Please attend the Grand Honors, taking your time from the worshipful Grand Marshal. Grand Lodge officers, BGPs, read your grand lectures, DDIs, please right, place your right hand over your heart and together with me repeat the oath of fidelity. To the high purposes of universal masonry. To the high purposes of universal masonry. To brotherly love, relief, and truth. To brotherly love, relief, and truth. To the upbuilding of this Grand Lodge. To the upbuilding of this Grand Lodge. To the promotion of harmony in this grand jurisdiction. To the promotion of harmony in this grand jurisdiction. To the real realization of our highest ideals. To the realization of our highest ideals. Of character and of life. Of character and of life. We here and now pledge anew. We here and now pledge anew. Our most earnest and unceasing efforts. Our most earnest and unceasing efforts. Amen. So, so would it be. be. It is with great reverence uh, that I have the honor and privilege to serve as the 170th Grand Master of Michigan Free and Accepted Masons. I do not have to be reminded that the mantle of Michigan Freemasonry has passed through the hands of many talented, highly esteemed, and distinguished brethren. It is our responsibility to continue building on the great tradition of Freemasonry bestowed upon us by these past rulers of the craft. So come gather around, brethren, wherever you roam, and admit that the waters around you have grown, and accept it that soon you'll be drenched to the bone if your craft to you is worth saving then you better start swimming or you'll sink like a stone. For the times, they are a-changing. We're not going to sink like a stone. 
To be successful in building our craft, we just must change with the times. I don't mean change to our Masonic beliefs, ancient crafts, charges, landmarks, and regulation or ritual. I mean change to our methods and practices that will allow us to relate fully to our brethren, families, communities, and prospective candidates. We already have the means and the tools to accomplish this and put us on a road that will strengthen our craft. We just have to use these tools to make proactive changes that will attract prospective candidates, changes that will ensure we are petitioning men of good character, men who will embrace our heritage, our way of life, and remain in the craft for a lifetime. We must apply our collective talents to be successful in meeting the challenges of change that Freemasonry faces today. In biology, this fact is bluntly stated as adapt or perish. So let's reflect on a moment about a past Masonic change or opportunity. When I was commander in chief of the Valley of Detroit, the Grand Master, a Scottish Rite Mason, most worshipful brother, Dean Barr, challenged us to an all-state reunion for all five valleys. This was not a new challenge, but it had never been accomplished. The vision for us in the four lower peninsula valleys was to travel to the upper peninsula valley of Marquette in April and confer degrees. The plan was for Jerry Millard, who happens to be our grand musician, to handle the west side of the state, and I would handle the east side. We were told that it had been tried before and it couldn't be done. It would be impossible to transport the costumes and the equipment. Very few members will travel to Marquette, especially during the winter, except for our past Grand Master. <laughs> in fact, our Director of Work said he wouldn't travel to the UP in April. The weather would be treacherous. My plan to confer a degree that required over 30 people was said to be ludicrous. So brethren didn't want to act, some brethren didn't want to actively support it and be part of a failure. I and the other three Detroit Valley leaders at that time, worshipable brothers John Kilborn, Matt Buck, and most worshipable brother Paul Cross, didn't need the naysayers to tell us it would be difficult. We stayed open-minded, kept a positive, honest, and realistic outlook. We defined the problems in detail, divided up the task, did a lot of follow-up, and kept our focus on the end game. In the end, many traveler, traveled by private cars. We even filled a 58-passenger bus with members from the valleys of Detroit and Bay City, supplied them with treats, refreshments, and a lot of enthusiasm. We crossed the bridge minutes before it was closed due to high winds and snow. <laughs> we drove through a whiteout. We even made all our planned stops on time. We were very well rehearsed and conferred excellent degrees. Our brethren and Grand Master's expectations were well exceeded. We all faced challenges like this every day. We can listen to the naysayers and try to ignore or avoid the challenges, but they won't go away. So let's face them now. Our challenges for this year, next year, and the subsequent years are not new. They are simply attract prospective candidates, evaluate and select only, only highly qualified candidates. We retain our brethren, strengthen our lodges, and create new lodges. Come masters, wardens, please heed the call. Don't stand in the doorway, 
Don't block up the hall. There's a battle outside and it's raging. It's shaken our lodge windows and rattled our lodge walls. For the times, are, they are a changing. It's time to end lodge closings and consolidations. It's time to end membership decline due to non-payment of dues or loss of interest. We, your Grand Lodge officers, are all in agreement with our plans this year to meet these challenges. So don't think you're going to see a program of the year. Your Grand Lodge officers are staying the course. Beginning next week, town hall meetings will be held in each region of the state to detail our expectation, goals, and strategies for meeting these challenges. Come good brethren throughout Michigan, and don't criticize what you can't understand. Two generations are beyond your command. Your old road is rapidly aging. Please keep out of the new one if you can't lend your hand. For the times, they are changing. We've lost two generations of prospective members. The old road certainly isn't working. So we're changing to a new one. I expect full participation by the officers of the lodges, the BGPs, the DDIs, in each region in which we will be holding town hall meetings. We can't miss being successful if we live by our beliefs that brotherly love, relief, and truth are limitless among God's unique creation of man. We exemplify the principles of altruism, morality, brotherhood, reverence for God and character that incorporates principles of personal righteousness and responsibilities. Our intent is to always act upright and meet on the level while squaring our actions and agree that all good men of every race and culture who profess a faith in an almighty creator are most welcome co to contribute their unique talents to the greater good of this fraternity and people across the world. We must stay open-minded and keep a positive, honest, and realistic outlook. We must define the problems in detail and divide up the task. We will follow up and keep focused on the end game, our brotherhood. We are brethren of the greatest fraternity on earth. Hold your heads up, be strong and proud, and lend your craft a hand. For the times, they are changing. Thank you. <laughs>